They need me. I don't need them. I'm out of here. Hi, welcome back to my channel. The name is Priscilla Kuma, you already know. And we have over 100 YouTube videos on my channel. Yay! Let's hear it up for Priscilla. We have over 100 videos and you have made this possible so thank you to you thanks for coming back always to watch videos if you're new here you know what to do click 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 today today's topic is nursing shortage you've heard this word over and over again nurses are short staffed understaffed yep and this is a worldwide issue but i will speak about america where i live and work as a registered nurse a foreign trained nurse from ghana who lives in the u.s and works as an RN in the US, so I can best speak to the issue that concerns me where I reside. So nursing shortage, thanks to the almighty COVID, the pandemic has been an eye-opener. It's had its pros and cons. People have benefited from it, as I always say, and it has opened eyes for so many people. So COVID has made us know that um, nurses are really really understaffed nurses are a very integral part of the medical team we are very important without us the hospital cannot run and without us the, your health issues cannot be addressed so yeah nurses are very important in the medical field and you know that so covid made nurses more vocal covid was an eye opener covid made nurses stay work as the slang is saying on the streets work I can speak personally about this issue I experienced. In getting into the hospital, I realized that, oh my God, the patient ratio that you read online, you read on Google, oh, one nurse will have four patients or three patients, and you think that is easy peasy? Trust me, it is not. That one patient is actually equal to 10 patients elsewhere. The workload, that one patient has so many things going on that it feels like you're nursing 10 patients in one. So imagine if you have three of those, four, five. I used to be somewhere where the ratio was between eight to 10. Eight to 10 patients for one nurse. It was terrible, yep. So COVID hit, the pandemic hit, everybody was running helter skelter. Nurses were being overworked like slaves, excuse my parents. Um, people were getting burnt out. I was working on the COVID floor as well. And it, it got to a time about eight of us had to be out sick because we all got covid as well so then covid opened eyes for nurses people began questioning their worth people began questioning management i'm doing this much work the workload is on i'm breaking down psychologically emotionally physically and what am i taking home peanuts basically peanuts trust me those figures and salaries and hourly pays you see online those are average things and they are not real until you are on the ground and your location matters everything boils around location and cost of living so therefore what became a lifesaver farvo nursing nurses got burned out they realized they were worth more than how they were being treated they realized that uh, the medical system needs them more than they need them so they began taking advantage of it so there was a wave everybody literally almost everybody walked out of the hospital to do travel nursing as you have seen online travel nursing is everywhere as soon as you're scrolling travel nurses passing by your screen lots of people went to do travel nursing and according to them it's been worth it but travel nursing has its pros and cons this is going to come in another video but the most important thing is that they are making the money and they are overworking or working the same amount of of what they used to do but the pay and their livelihood it's more comfortable now i don't know if you get what i'm trying to say I'm trying to put the english together not my mother tongue you know so people went far and near this local travel nursing where you'd be somewhere and work certain miles within your area where you live there's travel nursing where you pick up your stuff and go out of state or go somewhere else to work people even go out of the country to work so they, they sign up with agencies the agencies recruit you and give you a contract a 12-week contract a 30-week contract and if you like the agency after that contract you can renew and keep working with them different ag agencies have different price rates 
so everybody tries to drift towards the ones that pay higher so you go to work and you realize your colleague chris didn't show up to work you go the next day jessica is not here you go the next day kinsley and kevin didn't show up where did they go everybody's gone to do travel nursing and because you chit chat you chat with them like yeah i'm in california i'm making seven thousand dollars a week working 36 hours 312 i'm like oh my god you chat this person up oh my god i'm in new york city they are offering me 150 dollars an hour and i'm working four days and i'm this and i'm staying with a friend so i'm not paying for accommodation or some of them even arrange accommodation for you that is how everybody almost everybody left the hospital where they used to be a staff member and went to do travel nursing then the shortage hit almost every hospital in america here yes the pandemic was so serious people were falling very sick they needed more hands on deck so everybody was willing to offer as much as they can some agencies were offering ten thousand dollars a week you have to work six days with one day off ten thousand dollars a week some had other bonuses like they were going to forfeit your student loans and all that yes but the little downsides that i know speaking to my friends that are doing travel nursing is that um so you don't have any commitment or loyalty to one facility because you're a contract nurse working here and there so you you wouldn't have a maybe retirement or pension you wouldn't have a um, health insurance if you used to have insurance through your job you wouldn't have that anymore so some end up buying packages outside private insurances and uh, private retirement packages and all if you're making ten thousand dollars a week why not you'll be able to afford any package that is out there for your family your kids and your tuition and all those stuff you know yeah and some also have a goal that i'm just gonna do this for a year and i'm done and come back to be a staff nurse where i used to be or somewhere else so based on your priorities and your goal in life, it might work for you, it might not work for you. If you have little kids around, you might not be able to carry them and travel out of state. But if your partner works uh, from home, they, he will be able to go with you with the kids as well, you know. And if your partner happens to be, also be a nurse, you cannot be on the same contract assignment. The agencies have a way of working it out for you to travel and go. Let's not talk too much about travel nursing. This is not um, the topic we are discussing today. We're talking about nursing shortage so the travel nursing was enticing to everybody and that's how almost everybody got out of the hospital and the hospital began to suffer so the hospital management management freaked out they had a meeting sudden like what can we do to solve this thing then they began de deducing or de uh, making little meetings and plans okay let's offer our staff who have intentions of traveling a package that would keep them Let's call somebody, Priscilla, we hear you want to go travel. Because before you leave, you need to do the due diligence. You need to put your paperwork in and whatever before you walk away. That is how they get to know that you have the intention of leaving. So they bring certain things on board, call you to the office, close the door and be like, okay, are you going to do travel nursing? How much are they offering you? What if we offer you this one? So they begin to bargain with, with, with you. Then you begin to value yourself and go, wow they need me i don't need them i'm out of here so they give you little packages if you stay on we'll give you five thousand dollar bonus we will do this you can still keep part of your insurance you can still keep your retirement package but we'll do this for you we'll do this for you so if it makes sense for you and you weigh your options and you decide to stay <clears throat> then others will ask, oh okay so you have a way to work things out before you were not doing it in the past okay i'm also leaving then they talk to you and if it works for you, take it or not. Then they began doing sign up bonuses whereby you do overtime for this number of weeks. Then they give you this bonus at the end of the contract. As usual, since I love money, I love good things, I love comfort. I sign up for those um, those bonuses, those contracts. I did a couple of them and guess what? It burned me out. I got burned out. Because um, as a human being, you need rest. Your body is wired to rest, especially at night. So if you're working overnight, you're putting in so much overtime, it gets to a point, you're just going to feel very sick. You're going to be making the money, but you're going to be looking a mess. You'll be so exhausted. Your whole being will be exhausted. It will show facially. You don't even have time to be at home to groom yourself, take shower, look good, and all that. Have a social life. When people are awake, you are asleep. When people are asleep, you are awake just because you work overnight. Yeah. 
so those overtimes they are there there are so many uh, overtime slots to fill because everybody is gone but how many 12 hours can you do in a week do you want to work all the seven days because the money is enticing or the bonus they're gonna give you at the end of the contract sounds good you end up bre um, breaking down some of them you can't even terminate the contract if you end up missing a shift you won't get the end the bonus at the end of it so you're doing everything to stay awake stay alive stay healthy then covid doesn't tell you when it's coming then you force it get covid that is how they terminate your contract yes so there's so many overtime in the hospital and it's enticing but you should always think about your health because of the pandemic most nursing schools didn't have a chance to do clinicals hands-on clinicals on on real human beings in the hospital they were doing online a lot of people have done online and they become online nurses there are a lot of crash courses that were compressed people didn't finish their curriculum people didn't finish the number of years they were supposed to stay in school they did everything online i happened to have a chance to precept at somebody a capstone student and she was like i haven't seen any of these things you're showing me and i don't blame her she they did it online they did it in a simulation lab they did it online they watched youtube videos about how to do this and that so when it come on uh, onto the field hands-on practical becomes very difficult for you to to do or comprehend because you haven't practiced enough they had to rush them to um graduate them quickly and pump them into the system to support the system so how safe can such a person be how good can such a person be? And your lives are going to be in the hands of such a person who did nursing online. Nursing is not an online course. It's a practical course. Unless you're doing an upper, upper level education. If your basis are strong, you've worked for so many years and you are upgrading fine. But fresh from high school, going to nursing school and everything is online. When you come onto the field, you're going to suffer. Not to discourage you, not to scare you, but nursing is hands-on. Yeah, we have very, very good nurses who learned by working hands-on they haven't been to school to upgrade themselves again but they are very very good and they know their stuff and it was not because they did it online trust me then this no grad comes on to the unit because they they are desperate so they are clutching to straws and hiring anybody at all they see so they hire you it actually if you actually recommend somebody to be hired you also get a sign up bonus that is one of the packages they were offering when I know you working somewhere and you want to come and work where I have and I recommend you, I mention your name to them and you mention that Priscilla referred me. They give me, Priscilla, some amount of money as high as $5,000 and beyond just because I found a nurse for the system. So, and they give you a bond, like when you serve a year and a half or when you do one year, then after that, I'll get my, I'll get my bonus. But if you do six months, they'll give me a part. If you do 12 months, they'll give me a part. So if I'm a good person, I have a good conscience, and you also know about this, they'll be like, okay, let me refer you. Then we'll slash it. If they give me $5,000, I'll give you $2,500. I'll take $2,500. That is $2,500. Yeah. So they were doing all sorts of things just to recruit people. And the health system was exchanging hands. People were leaving this facility and going to the other one. People were leaving this one and going to the other one, wherever they have good packages. So I had this friend who also moved along, came to join me at where I work, and she did it barely six months. And they were big, willing to float her. Though she was an experienced nurse, that hospital was new to her. That floor was new to her. She didn't have any experience, but because other units were short, they now began floating any kind of person. So how, how safe can that person be? They were browning floors as in blocking floors out because there are no nurses to work there. So they were closing other floors. They were combining units. Doctors had to come down. Nursing practitioners had to come from other facilities to come and help. And they have not practiced nursing in a long while. So they can't take patient assignments. So they can only do errands for you. They can check blood glucose for you. They can hand you cleaning stuff. They can take your patient to the discharge for you but that is not what you need you need somebody who will stay by your patient when they are coding that is what you need somebody who will be actively participating in saving a life not somebody who is handing you a detergent and wipes and water and doing a discharge for you though it helps as well we're looking for all sort of help from all angles and people began getting burnt out getting burnt out so when you listen to your friend who is making this amount of money then you leave so the pandemic has been one of the biggest causes of the shortage. It actually opened eyes for people to travel. That is how everybody left. 
now new york state was talking about if <clears throat> if worse come to worse they would have to get bring in um immigrant nurses nurses who who live and work and train outside the u.s to come and support the system but when you bring such people to it's going to give you need amount of time to train them you need money to bring them over money to accommodate them money to show them how to drive how to get licensed you need to walk them through the process reintegrate them into the country resettle them before they can even come onto the hospital and train and work and how long is that going to take i went through that same integration process and it wasn't funny it was not easy at all i'm still learning i still have a lot to learn because the systems are entirely different this system is highly technological highly well equipped and you need to be on top of your game so if you're coming from elsewhere outside the u.s you need a lot of time to get used to stuff there's a lot i'm still learning trust me and you're going to be feeling very lost your first few years it is very very hard not to scare you, not to discourage you. This is a channel that I give it to you as it is. Plain and blank, frank and straight to the point. So, when this new grand nurse comes, as soon as she serves one year, because most of the travel nursing are recruiting you with one year experience in the hospital. So their goal is just come in, get that one year experience and walk out and go do travel nursing. Mind you, new, these new grand nurses are young. They are like 19, 20 like to up to maybe 25 and they are single they are free no extra commitment kids and partner and all that so they are willing to go anywhere in the country to go make their money they have a ton of student loans they've they've acquired and they are trying to pay them off so as soon as they get that one year requirement they are gone i remember when i had 10 months one of the travel nurses travel agencies were always texting me oh congrats on your 10 months and we can actually start your processing now uh you have a Oh, congrats on your 11th month you have few days more to your 12 month a 12 month mark your one year experience and we can start your onboarding process and they will be rushing you so now some have even lowered it to like 10 months or nine months they'll work something around with you especially if you worked in the icu or something they believe nine months you'd have seen a little bit so they'll rush you so the hospital became like a training ground and a springboard an entrance point for people to enter got that requirement for the travel nursing and whew, they ran away they were losing nurses like water every single day to travel nursing because see being a staff nurse sitting at one place what you are paid is so so bad it doesn't match up with what the travel agencies are offering you you are paid between something like let's say 28 28 dollars an hour to let's say $40 an hour, depending on where you are, if you're lucky. If you're like RN3 on was $40 an hour, based on where you are as a staff nurse that you've put in like seven years of work. So, so not worth it. Then you find this agency that's willing to give you $120 an hour, or $10,000 a week, or $7,000 a week. Won't you go if everything works in your favor? People travel with their kids, baby. People are doing travel nursing with their whole family. They are moving around because your accommodation is still sorted. They give you a stipend for traveling certain miles and all that. Yes. So people were like, hmm. So all this is, I mean, I'm being cheated. It was like, boom, eye open. And the blindfold has been lifted. Like, wow. So all this, yes, I'm being cheated. Oh my God. I deserve more than what they're offering me. Yes. And that is how they began leaving. That is how they all began leaving. So you have a new grad and you tell them all this, then you train them and then you lose them. So you go to a unit and they have like a, a seven month old nurse being charged nurse, a seven month old nurse being a preceptor. Somebody was six months and she was training somebody. The oldest person on that unit had worked for a year and a half. And they're all young, young people because of the workload and all the craziness, the elderly nurses left the system. They began retiring early. That is one cause of the shortage. People were now retiring early. They couldn't keep up with the craziness. Cause when you speak with them, they said, uh, during my time, it wasn't like this. The patients were not this sick. The patients were not this mean. The patients were not this demanding and everything worked. Management was not horrible. Management was not this horrible and everything was working well. 
but now they can't take it so they get their retirement they get a certain age where they can get their benefits then they retire so there are a lot of slots to be filled for people nurses who are retiring early and other health work, health care workers who are also retiring very early number one they have other comorbidities so they want they don't want to be in the hospital end up getting covered end up falling sick they want to keep themselves safe their children safe their grandkids safe so they just quickly retire and come stay home and find something doing yes also another cause also the nurses realize oh social media is here it's helping a lot of nurses i'm on social media i'm on youtube they know all these apps you can make money on it they began creating content nurses are creating content nurses are having travel agencies nurses nurses are having home care facilities nursing are doing um entrepreneurship they are doing selling products selling products that they make themselves nursing are having hair products nursing are having hair blog and hair content creators nursing are like um what do we call it influencing for products Let's not influencing for products, let's some toothbrush or something, and they are influencers because they have massive following. Then they were making other side hustles. Nessie realized, wow, I can't just be doing nursing, nursing, nursing. Because if your health fails you, if your body fails you, if your arms and hands or you are stuck at one place, you can't go. There should be something on the side working for you. Nurses who are flipping houses. People who do my hair are all nurses. Nurses working, have owning salons and buying houses and renting houses and flipping houses. Then they're like, why am I even going to this hospital when I'm making more money being an entrepreneur? I'm making more money on YouTube. I'm making more money doing, doing hair for somebody. I'm making more money flipping houses. They're like, okay, forget the BS. I'm out of this place yes so these are some of the reasons why there is shortage of nurses in america and worldwide just in summary the first one is the pay the pay is not good at all number two shortage staffing is so bad the patient ratio is so so bad three that leads to burnout 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 four toxic work environment micromanagers so many issues with management and your colleagues there's so many bickering and beefing toxic environment so people just need to get out and number five no social life or work-life balance you work 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 you come home and you're so exhausted you don't have time for family you don't have time for so, um, social you don't have a social life you, especially if you work in the oxy shift if you're working evenings or you're working nights you're hardly home when you're home people are at work when you're work people are at home so these are the reasons why people are walking out the pandemic was an eye-opener nurses began valuing themselves they realized they are worth and they're getting out of the system it has benefited a lot of people people are making big money because their eye got opened and they are traveling so these are just some of the reasons why there's nursing shortage i'm sure this applies in country you are in watching this i'm sure you know you have the same issue and i know for for ghana we have so many nursing training colleges we have so many nursing schools in ghana and the issue is actually how to find a job the hospitals and clinics are not hiring you finish nursing school and stay home for so long waiting for clearance and waiting for posting and after you've done your rotation or national service you have to be applying for a job as a degree nurse looking for a job here and there i stayed home for eight months before i finally got a job yes so we have nurses sitting at home in ghana waiting for a job and looking for a job they are doing some one or two in some private clinics that don't pay you well use this to the maximum but the money is not good you can't make a living the rent is expensive picking commercial vehicles to work your personal upkeep food family and all but the money is not good so the reverse is actually happening we say there is nursing shortage in ghana yes but there are so many nursing schools pumping nurses out be it certificate be it diploma be it degree but the system is choked they don't have an entry point they don't have where to work only a few get into the system and the same applies to teachers as well let's not digress and i'm going to bring another video and we're talking about mass exodus nurses are leaving africa to europe to america to come and work what is the cause of mass exodus why are nurse immigrants coming into the country why are they leaving africa why are they leaving west africa 
everybody is seeking greener pastures and that will be the next topic thanks for logging in with me and i didn't flow all this in this video but i hope i made some valid points share this with other people and i'll see you again in my next video love yourself love your neighbors and bye bye